In this unit, we're going to see lots of different types of chemical reactions, so we need to get to grips with those all-important word equations. So, let's start by looking at exactly what a chemical reaction is. First of all, chemical reactions always produce a new substance. They often release large amounts of energy, but most importantly, a chemical change, unlike most physical changes, cannot be changed back. Let's have a look at some that are close to home. Just in time. Perfect. Another chemical reaction has just happened here. Chemical reactions are useful in cooking. They help improve the taste of food. Cooking and chemistry have quite a bit in common. The starting materials in a chemical reaction are called the reactants. These react with each other to form a completely new substance, the product. As you can see, products have very different properties to the reactants. This cake is a lot firmer, mm, tastes a lot nicer than the individual reactants. It's a different colour too. Not all chemical reactions need heat energy to make them happen. Take some bicarbonate of soda, add a little vinegar, and watch. It's another chemical reaction. This time, one of the products is a gas, enough to inflate a balloon. Let's take a closer look at another chemical reaction. What happens when we add the metal iron, which is in powdered form, to yellow powdered sulphur? The iron is a metal and, as we can see, is magnetic. The two reactants are mixed together and then heated. When the substance cools, we have a black solid called iron sulphide, a new substance which we call the product, and we can test. It's no longer magnetic. A chemical reaction has taken place because we started off with two elements, iron and sulphur, and ended up with a compound, iron sulphide which looks and behaves very differently from the original reactants. So you should know that chemical reactions are made up of reactants which react together to produce new substances called products. To summarise the reaction of iron and sulphur, we can also write a word equation for it. The reactants are iron and sulphur. They're put on the left-hand side of the equation, and the product, iron sulphide, appears on the right-hand side of the equation. So iron plus sulphur equals iron sulphide. Now, you really need to get to grips with word equations to answer chemistry questions in the test, so there are plenty more in other sections of this unit. And if you'd like more practice, why not check out our website, which has loads of examples. Oxidation reactions are another type of chemical reaction. This time, a substance reacts with oxygen. Let's have a look at several oxidation reactions where the substance burns in air. Remember, an oxidation reaction is where oxygen is gained chemically. Fires need oxygen. The more oxygen, the faster they burn. This biscuit is soaked in liquid oxygen. A piece of wood burns so well when it's soaked in liquid oxygen that it even burns under water. But what happens if you can't increase the amount of oxygen? Aluminium foil won't burn, but if you grind it into a fine powder and blow it into a flame, it will. Lumpy custard? Powdered custard? Other oxidation reactions are the burning of fuels, and these are called combustion reactions, as they release large quantities of thermal energy, heat energy. All fuels, like gas, wood, coal and wax, burn in oxygen, producing heat and light, and waste products carbon dioxide and water. And it's this heat and light that can be controlled and used to provide warmth for things like cooking and for the generation of electricity. Let's look more closely at the burning of a fuel. 
Fire is a chemical reaction. The flame you see is what comes out of this chemical reaction. Gas is so hot that they're glowing. The chemical reaction happened between fuel, natural gas, and oxygen from the air. But to get the reaction going, it also took heat energy. These are the three things you need for fire. A fuel, oxygen, and heat energy. The chemical reaction produces more heat, energy which is useful. But useful not just to us, it also keeps this reaction going, so long as the fuel and oxygen keep on coming. So for your test, you need to know that oxidation reactions are when substances react with oxygen. Oxygen is gained chemically. And combustion is the burning of fuels with oxygen to produce heat energy. That brings us to the end of this section. Don't forget, there is more information in the series book and on our website. Another category of reactions is decomposition reactions. These are chemical reactions where a compound is broken down into simpler substances. This can be done by heating using a catalyst or by electricity. So when copper carbonate is heated, it breaks down into copper oxide and carbon dioxide. Oh, that is quick. There we have it. Copper carbonate, copper oxide. Many metals exist naturally in the ground as oxides. This is aluminium oxide, bauxite. This is iron oxide. And this is copper oxide. Now, they don't look much like the pure metal because they are compounds of the metal and oxygen. To release the pure metal, the oxygen has to be removed. And this is done by thermal decomposition. This yellow powder is lead oxide. It looks nothing like the metal lead, does it? It's impossible to separate the lead from the oxygen by sieving or shaking. Instead, I need to heat it with carbon, the black powder, to produce a chemical reaction. Eventually, it releases tiny drops of molten metal, pure lead. And we can write a word equation for this reaction. Lead oxide plus carbon makes lead plus carbon dioxide. So thermal decomposition is a chemical reaction where a compound is broken down into much simpler substances. We use many different chemical reactions to produce useful things. Bread, beer, other foods, plastics and medicines. Even the colours in our clothes are there because of a chemical reaction. The metals aluminium and copper occur naturally in the ground as compounds with oxygen. Aluminium oxide, bauxite, is chemically changed into the pure metal by decomposition. This is done by passing an electric current through the bauxite. But with copper oxide, the oxygen is removed by heating, thermal decomposition, to produce the pure metal. So far in this unit, we've looked at a variety of different chemical reactions, but not all chemical reactions are useful. For instance, when food goes off or it's spoilt, the reason is chemical reactions. Chemicals within the food react with oxygen in the air. Remember oxidation reactions. The new chemicals formed are unpleasant as they affect both the appearance and the flavour of the food. This oxidation of food can be prevented by adding antioxidants or by vacuum packing where all the air has been removed from around the food. And it's not only food that is adversely affected by oxidation. This looks like it's going to be an interesting investigation. I'm meeting Alex aboard her ship. Hello, Alex. Hi, Femi. Welcome aboard. Thank you. To find out about a very unusual example of a familiar problem, rust. I have to wear this hat, I'm afraid. Right, thank you. So, I hear you have a bit of a rusty problem. We do indeed. So, where is it? It's 
down here. Oh. The world's first engine-powered submarine called the Resurgum, which sank back in 1880. But what sort of condition is it in? Well, that's what we don't know. It's made of iron, and iron rusts or corrodes, especially in the seawater in this sort of environment. So we're surveying it to find out what sort of condition it's in. Rust is the product of a chemical reaction. The iron reacts with the oxygen in the air or in the seawater. It's a form of oxidation. It also needs moisture, and there's no shortage of that on a ship. And it leads to corrosion, like this. I don't have to get wet to see the resurgum. The camera on the front of the remotely controlled Explorer allows us to see everything that's down there. But look, it hasn't rusted away. It's actually got bigger. Back on deck... Look at this. What is that? Alex has something found on another shipwreck. It's Most of this is rust built up over hundreds of years on the seabed. I need to get my delicate tools. Mm. Yes. There you go. Can you see the object in there? There, can you see? That's an iron shot. When I touch it, you can feel it's oh. hard. And that's the rust around there. That's the rust around there. It's amazing. Can't wait to see what's on our sub down below. Can we take a look? Yeah, let's dive. I want to see if I can bring something up from the resurgum so we can see what sort of condition it's in. Oh, no, 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 look, I think there's something there. I mean, look, look, can you see? You have to go forwards, forwards, forwards. Yeah, yeah. You see, look, it's, it's round. Can you see the outline? Excellent! We get some divers to go down. And well, we can survey. pick it up. Yeah, we'll get a survey and pick it up. Let's go! I have no idea what I found. This has been lying on the sea floor for more than 110 years. Yeah, that's right. It's a porthole. It's one of the portholes from the conning tower. Fantastic. It's in really good condition. I mean, it's marvellous. You can still even see the glass in the middle of it. For rusting to occur, we can see that two things are necessary, oxygen and water. In the first reaction, we can see from the word equation that iron reacts with oxygen to produce iron oxide. Then the iron oxide reacts with water to produce hydrated iron oxide, the brown, crumbly rust we saw in the clip. So, rusting is an example of an unhelpful chemical reaction. Another example on a larger scale is the effect of burning fossil fuels. We've seen that burning fossil fuels, combustion reactions, produces heat, which we can harness for energy, but the chemical reaction also produces carbon dioxide as a waste product. So burning fossil fuels in huge quantities can have some adverse effects on the environment because it increases the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that may increase global warming. Burning fossil fuels for energy also produces pollutants such as sulfur dioxide that reacts with water in the atmosphere and falls as acid rain. That brings us to the end of this unit. Now, if you're not sure about any of the different types of chemical reactions, why not rewind and maybe focus on those word equations? Or you could also use the book or the website for some more practice. Remember, it's your choice.